At the time of scripting out this video, news broke out in regards to William Regal getting released from his WWE contract. It was pretty unexpected to say the least. Regal had been a mainstay in NXT where he wore many different hats, from talent scout to trainer to on-screen general manager, and many felt that Regal had become such a big part of NXT that he'd just be there forever. No one truly knows what's going on behind the scenes and there's many, many theories being thrown out there in regards to NXT 2.0, but it does look like the WWE want to completely reset the brand, and that includes getting rid of some of the guys who made the original NXT so successful. Yeah, it's totally insane, I know. William Regal has experienced highs and lows during his career both from a personal and in-ring perspective. His candid autobiography tells the tale of a man struggling with his professional life, his family life and his overall health, but it also tells the tale of a man succeeding in the wrestling business while all these other struggles were going on at the same time. The personal turmoil, the professional highs and lows, Regal's in-ring abilities, all these things I feel would make him the perfect mentor and the perfect guy to teach the younger generation about life as a pro wrestler and how to stay on track. I imagine he would have been an absolute wealth of knowledge backstage and with the things he could do in the ring as both a pro wrestler and an entertainer, he seemed like a perfect trainer or coach. It kinda took me back when it was announced that the WWE didn't require his services anymore and I honestly thought this all has to be playing into some sort of storyline. Triple H returns, he brings along Samoa Joe and William Regal to fire up the black and gold vs 2.0 story again, something like that. It just seems insane and unbelievable to me that you'd let someone like Regal go, but at the same time, it's not very surprising either. The WWE seem to be making very strange decisions as of late. Still, before continuing on, Regal had a great run in NXT, and he'd done extremely well to stay as the brand's on-screen GM for so long. He's gonna do fine no matter where he goes next. Today I want to look at Regal's King of the Ring victory in 2008. This was a pretty fascinating time in Regal's career because at one point it looked like the company were trying to push him right up into the main event picture. It turns out to be another rise and fall story unfortunately but it does give us insight to those highs and lows Regal went through during his professional career and Regal's experience during this time period is definitely something that other guys could learn from. Our story begins on August 6th, 2007 when William Regal became the new general manager of Monday Night Raw. He filled in previously for Jonathan Coachman and even before this, he served as the WWF's commissioner, which was very entertaining by the way. Having Tajiri as his little sidekick during this time period was a stroke of genius and Regal's comedic timing made his commissioner run a whole lot of fun to watch. When Regal became the new Raw GM in 2007, he once again utilised his comedy skills to make his management role a little more lighthearted than others, but it also didn't take too long before Regal turned into a full blown heel, and that was mainly thanks to Mr McMahon. Regal may have become yet another villainous authority figure, but this change of position also allowed Regal to mix it up with the main eventers of WWE Raw. William really wasn't doing a whole lot before he became the new GM. His new on-screen role allowed him to cut promos and even get physical with some of the WWE's top stars at the time. Unfortunately, Regal failed a wellness test just a few weeks into his new role and he had to sit at home for 30 days after the suspension, but he was brought back and the GM stuff continued on and eventually, Regal found himself getting involved in a short but noteworthy feud with Triple H, something that was unimaginable just a few months prior to Regal becoming GM. On New Year's Eve, Vince McMahon gave William Regal a chance to start the new year the right way. Vince wanted Regal to have a match against his illegitimate son Hornswoggle. McMahon wanted Regal to show Hornswoggle some tough love and Regal didn't want to let his boss down, so the match was booked and it would happen later in the evening. Meanwhile, Triple H was also booked in a match, a match against his friend Ric Flair. This was during the whole Ric Flair retirement angle where if the nature boy lost the match, then he'd be forced into retirement a stipulation that was added to all Ric Flair matches by none other than Vince McMahon himself. To ensure Triple H wouldn't go lightly on Flair, William Regal informed the King of Kings that if he loses the match, then he won't participate in the 2008 Royal Rumble, so Hunter would have to think twice about letting his friend pick up an easy victory. 
So, during the Hornswoggle match, Regal couldn't attack Vince's son. Vince tossed Regal's signature brass knucks into the ring, and Vince demanded that Regal hit Hornswoggle. But Regal ended up letting his opponent go, and this, naturally, pissed off the chairman of the board. Vince slapped Regal, saying he didn't really want William to hurt Hornswoggle, he just wanted to know if he'd do it. And after Vince asks Regal who he was and what happened to his guts, the Raw GM gets sent to the back and the show goes on. During the main event Triple H vs Ric Flair match, Regal reappeared, hitting Ric Flair with his brass knucks and thus giving Ric Flair a DQ victory. This meant Hunter would not be competing in the 2008 Royal Rumble. Regal had just cost a big main eventer a high stakes match. Maybe this could, potentially, lead to Regal himself getting involved in more main event matches. The following week was both good and bad when we talk about Regal maybe getting moved up the ranks within WWE. Regal said he attacked Flair to make up for not attacking Hornswoggle, and while Vince was happy that Triple H was out of the Royal Rumble, he also wanted Hunter to get badly injured. This was a special Raw Roulette episode where certain match stipulations would get decided by a spin of the wheel, and Regal found himself in a first blood match against the game, trying to cause injury just like Vince McMahon wanted. This is a match that Triple H won. As mentioned, there's good and bad here. It's good Regal was facing guys like Triple H on Raw, but Regal was also defeated with relative ease. It didn't really feel like Regal had a chance due to his current placement on the WWE ladder, general manager role notwithstanding. If the WWF wanted to make Regal seem like a legitimate threat in the ring, a few things needed to change. Firstly, he had to start winning more matches. Secondly, he would have to stop looking like Vince McMahon's lapdog. And finally, he would need a legitimate mean streak that went beyond booking unfavorable matches for the babyfaces on Monday Night Raw. And that's where the King of the Ring comes into play. This mini rivalry with Triple H, there's a ton of speculation that this was all done to test the waters for a future Triple H vs William Regal feud that could potentially include the WWE Championship, and a King of the Ring victory would give Regal much more credibility before he was given main event matches at the very top of the cards. I just have to point out though that, like anything of this nature, it's always rumours and speculation. We don't know what was planned and we maybe never will. Fans like to point out how successful Booker T had become following his King of the Ring victory and how that led to the world title, but we simply can't say that Regal was going to be champion, although I do admit it's very interesting to think about. William Regal didn't have a match at WrestleMania 24, and some may see his WWE title shot against Randy Orton on the April 14th 2008 episode of Raw as a throwaway bout, a match that only happened because it took place in England. There may be some truth to that, and the chances of William Regal winning the WWE Championship in London did feel pretty low, but the WWE actually were continuing the William Regal push. The very next week, a special 3 hour edition of Raw featured the 2008 King of the Ring tournament. The 2008 King of the Ring featured stars from Raw, SmackDown, and ECW, and it included names like CM Punk, Chris Jericho, MVP, Matt Hardy, and of course, William Regal. The King of the Ring would kind of come and go during this time period, with the last tournament being held in 2006, and before that, 2002. As mentioned earlier, the 2006 tournament was won by Booker T, and the win not only gave Booker a brand new character, but it also brought him the World Heavyweight Championship. The King of the Ring isn't a surefire way of telling if a guy is going to get pushed to the main event, but it has been a good indicator in the past, and so whoever was winning this thing in 2008 could potentially see a boost in their position on the cards. It wasn't guaranteed, but it was very possible. William Regal's inclusion in the tournament surprised Jim Ross and the King on commentary, and Regal made life easy for himself by facing Hornswoggle in his quarterfinal match. Remember, Regal was still the GM after all. This time, Regal had no problems taking out Hornswoggle with a Regal stretch, and he even got a chance to cheap shot Finlay, the guy who Regal would face in the semi-finals, and a guy who just got done having a match with the great Kali. Regal had a different look in his eyes after winning his quarterfinal match, and in the semi-final, Regal absolutely decimated Finlay. Finlay passed out while in the Regal stretch, and Regal showed absolutely no mercy. This right here is the main streak that we talked about earlier on. 
Regal's final match would be against CM Punk of ECW, the holder of the Money in the Bank briefcase. Many thought this would be another win for CM Punk, and even the commentators made mention of Punk's recent string of victories being very impressive. I'm not sure anyone could have predicted that William Regal would actually win this thing. It's not that he didn't have the ability to do so, it's not that he didn't deserve to win it, but Regal's booking in the WWE along with his win-loss record in big matches just wasn't all that good. He was kinda always the guy who would put other people over. But on this very night, William Regal defeated CM Punk clean in the middle of the ring. Punk tapped out of the Regal stretch, and William Regal became the 2008 King of the Ring. Regal didn't say a word throughout the whole night, his actions done the talking for him, but what can't be overlooked at all here was just how different this William Regal was even compared to the heel general manager that was on TV in the run up to this very night. Regal was unapologetic in the ring, he absolutely wrecked the opponents placed in front of him, and he sat on his throne looking extremely pleased with both himself and the damage he was able to do in the tournament. This was a new William Regal, and we'd have to tune in next week to see what he had to say for himself. A coronation ceremony was held on the April 28th episode of Raw, and this shot right here has become so memorable when we talk about Regal's entire career. Regal's just sat on his throne waiting to address the audience. Regal says he will not give up his role as general manager, and because of this King of the Ring victory, Regal has now become the most powerful entity in the entire WWE. Fans won't like him, wrestlers won't like him, but they now have no choice but to fear King Regal. There was something here for sure, no more comedy, no more slimy heel work. Regal was coming across as a legit badass and it was exciting to see where this could go. Mr. Kennedy ends up interrupting the promo. Kennedy says he would have won the King of the Ring had he been invited to the tournament and to prove that, Kennedy challenges Regal to a match. Regal says he isn't a standard common wrestler, he's the GM and the King, so Kennedy should have arranged an appointment if he wanted to issue a challenge. Regal then demands an apology from Kennedy, but Ken decides to repeat his name instead. The Regal of old may have taken this kind of stuff, but this William Regal punches Kennedy in the mouth, and I mean, he punches him in the mouth. Kennedy! Oh! The Regal beats Kennedy out of the ring, Kennedy gets back in, and officials break up a fist fight. And you can see Regal done a good bit of damage here when the camera zooms in on Mr. Kennedy. If this wasn't enough, the main event of Raw featured a Triple H vs Randy Orton WWE title match. We cut over to the production truck in the middle of the bout, and William Regal talks to Kerwin Silfies about fans disrespecting him. Regal says he's the king and he's the GM, and so Regal demands that Kerwin takes Raw off the air, effectively robbing fans of seeing the main event. Kerwin tries to brush Regal off, and this makes Regal completely explode. Take it off the planet! Take it off the air now! No! Raw fades to black, and we don't see what happens during the Triple H vs. Randy Orton main event. The next week, Raw opens up with a video recapping Regal's actions. We go to the arena, and Mr. McMahon stands on the stage holding a microphone. How would Vince react to his flagship show getting switched off by one of his very own superstars? Well, Vince actually liked it. Vince says Regal's actions were innovative, daring, and visionary. William Regal reminds Vince McMahon of Vince McMahon, so Vince fully endorses William Regal, and the fans should respect Regal and his actions. Regal cuts a promo in the ring where he says once again that fans won't like him, but they should respect him. Regal wants to know if he now has the fans' respect after what happened last week, and of course, the fans boo. Regal says he'll turn the lights off at his own discretion, and because the fans continue to boo the King of the Ring, Regal orders that the arena lights get turned off. He turns them back on, and he says Raw will play out in complete darkness if the crowd continues to disrespect him, and this prompts Mr. Kennedy to once again come out and issue another challenge to Regal. Regal says he's Kennedy's superior, Kennedy needs to remember that, and so Ken won't be facing Regal tonight, but instead, he'll face the entire ECW roster in the main event. 
Triple H then shows up and this is when things get interesting and this is also when people start to believe that Regal vs Hunter was a possible future main event. Triple H congratulates Regal but Hunter also says if Regal wants to stay in position then he needs to stop making mistakes. Mistakes like stopping Triple H matches and cutting off the Raw broadcast while Hunter was still in the ring. Hunter says if Regal wants to keep his position then he doesn't want to go to war with the game and Regal is absolutely unfazed. It looks like he's actually enjoying himself as the WWE Champion throws down these idle threats. Regal says he wouldn't come after Triple H, the game's gonna be way too busy, because not only does Hunter have a WWE Championship defense in two weeks time against Randy Orton, but Triple H will join Mr. Kennedy tonight in that ECW match. Kennedy and Triple H will team up and take on the entire ECW brand. Now it ended up being 14 guys from ECW and not absolutely everyone was there, but still the odds were stacked up against the babyfaces. Before we look at the main event of Raw, Regal came out during a Randy Orton vs CM Punk match and he once again turned off the lights in the arena while also ending the bout early. Randy Orton was fuming backstage afterwards while Regal continued his quest to force respect out of fans. Regal talks to the ECW guys before the main event and he says this is an easy win and anything less would be considered a disappointment. The ECW wrestlers do end up winning the match, it would have been a little silly if they took a loss here, but they all end up fighting among themselves after the final bell. The lights go out once again and when they come back on, Randy Orton's in the ring and he hits Triple H with an RKO. This was all set up by William Regal. As you can probably tell, things were going pretty good for Regal in this new character. Again, you gotta compare this to where Regal was previously. The Regal show continued on the 12th of May episode of Raw with the broadcast opening up in complete darkness. The lights come on, Regal stands in the ring, and Lillian Garcia is forced to sing God Save the Queen as Regal looks out at the fans, completely free of any emotion. The crowd boos, and Regal sees this as disrespectful to both his country and himself. Regal reminds everyone that he's the GM and the king, he can do what he wants, and this includes removing fans from the arena. Regal then says he's gonna set an example, he goes to the outside, he orders security to remove two fans, and Mickey James appears and apparently this is Mickey's brother who Regal wants kicked out. Regal gets back in the ring and he tells Mickey to leave before she too is forcibly removed from the arena. Regal even threatens to strip Mickey of the women's championship and this prompts John Cena to show up and Cena defends Mickey. He says he knows what it's like to give everything to the fans and fans still chant you suck. He knows Regal has a new position and it must be stressful, but Regal's going about this the wrong way and to show how bad things currently are, Cena reads out some complaints that fans sent in. One even compares Regal's reign of terror to WCW Thunder. Cena starts a fire Regal chant, Regal shows a little compassion and he says he won't turn off the lights during any matches tonight, and he even books a Cena vs Orton match, giving Cena a chance at revenge for an injury he sustained two weeks prior. Regal says he hopes he's earned the fans respect by making this match, maybe Regal had changed his ways after only one John Cena promo, and even though Cena can't just leave it at that and he has to make Lillian sing Aretha Franklin's R-E-S-P-E-C-T, Regal still seems humbled and he nods his head in respect to the United States. Not one hour later, Jeff Hardy made his WWE return and while he tried to address the fans, his microphone got turned off. William Regal shows up and he says there's nothing wrong with Jeff's mic, there's something wrong with Jeff. Regal wants to punish Hardy and so Umaga gets sent out to the ring and a surprise match takes place on Raw. Jeff Hardy wins but still, it shows us that Regal hadn't changed his ways at all. During the Cena vs Orton match, Regal screwed Cena over by replacing the referee with JBL, and he also ordered the cage to come down when Triple H interfered. Orton had the upper hand when the cage was lowered, but Raw still ended with Triple H getting the upper hand over his Judgment Day opponent. Regal's involvement in this show was definitely lessened when compared to other shows. Judgment Day was the next WWE pay-per-view and William Regal watched the show from a luxury suite inside the arena. 
This right here was all we saw of Regal the whole night, which was a bit strange. He'd gotten himself involved in Cena's storyline in the Triple H vs Randy Orton feud, not to forget his own rivalry with Mr Kennedy, but he was pretty much unused throughout the entire pay per view. The next night on Raw, the push came to an abrupt end. After booking a tag team main event match, Regal was about to address the audience but then Mr Kennedy once again interrupted the King of the Ring and Raw general manager. Kennedy again challenges Regal to a singles match, Regal refuses, and Regal also says the next person to interrupt him during a promo will get fired on the spot. No chance in hell plays in the arena and out comes Vince McMahon, Mr Kennedy gets a smug look on his face. Vince says that ever since he gave Regal his endorsement, the WWE have received more complaints than ever before. McMahon knows Regal doesn't care about what the fans think, Vince doesn't care either, but Vince is concerned about his finances. Apparently when Regal comes on TV, the ratings go down, and this is a problem for Vince McMahon and the WWE. The fans want Regal gone, but Regal and McMahon want Kennedy gone, so a loser leaves town match gets booked, where the loser has to leave the company, just like that. The match itself was pretty good, with Regal using his position to change the bout into a no disqualification affair, but Kennedy ends up hitting the mic check, and Regal is forced to leave WWE. Regal looks out at the crowd as they sing goodbye, and just as quick as the push began, it was all over. Regal went home for 60 days to serve another wellness suspension, and the King Regal angle was completely scrapped. Some will say that Regal got what he deserved here, but it was also revealed later that it was an over the counter medication Regal was taking that had a banned ingredient. Whatever it was that Regal was taking at this time, it was available to purchase in a chemist or pharmacy, but the strict guidelines around testing during this time period and the testing being done via external sources meant that Regal had to accept the suspension. This comes from Bruce Pritchard's podcast by the way, so it's your call really if you want to believe that. Nonetheless, Regal came back to work on the 28th of July episode of Raw as a free agent. He was defeated by world champion CM Punk, and then he began a feud with Jamie Noble. Regal did keep a more aggressive ring style upon his return, but the whole King of the Ring and Raw GM thing, the powerful entity stuff, all that was completely forgotten about. This sounds like a drastic downgrade from where Regal was previously, and it was. There's no argument to be had, but he did manage to win the Intercontinental Championship later in the year. It's another one of wrestling's big what if stories. Watching this stuff back, you can tell there were big plans for Regal, but unfortunately, we'll never know what they truly were. I was a little skeptical about the whole Regal vs Triple H rivalry ever being a plan in the first place, but when I watched this all back for the upload, I can definitely see why people would think it was gonna happen. I actually now think the same. There was definitely something there, the WWE sunk way too much time into Regal's segments and he was, for those few weeks, getting more heat than anyone else in WWE. It's a shame too, because some of Regal's work immediately after winning the King of the Ring was absolutely phenomenal. I'm sure there's some out there who don't think of William Regal as world champion material, for whatever reason, but watch this stuff back and you'll realise just how good he was as a serious heel. I think it would have worked and I think it's very interesting thinking about where the WWE could have went with Regal as a heel world champion. But that's going to do it for this one guys, thank you very very much for watching and take care.